we'll um, fire a few, few other managers and um, and we'll call it a day. So Pochettino, we're, we're pretty excited about. Let's go move on to Luis Enrique. He's another manager we mentioned. Obviously, highly um, successful at um, Barcelona. He was recently manager of the Spain team of the World Cup at the last Euros, where he got to the semi-final of the Euros and lost to Morocco in the World Cup. Uh, we'll go to Ash first. Luis Enrique, he's someone you, look, you, you like the look of? I told him we're ruining him, straight up. I told him we're ruining him. I love Enrique. <laughs> I love Enrique. I think his passing, that, that, that part... I think, basically, with Spain, they needed a Harry Kane. And because they never had a Harry Kane, they overcooked the passing. If they had like someone that was a little bit more vim up top, I think Spain would have got further because I think they dominated Morocco. But Morocco just did the part of the boss and then they picked them off. And that's why Spain went out. But I think Spain was phenomenal in that tournament. Barcelona, obviously, he went from the 4 3 3 into a 3 4 3. And the Barcelona fans were happy with it. But he got the best out of Barcelona, even though people were saying, oh, you know, he had the. You know, was it not SAS, the Suarez, MSN or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Basically, when you look at Roma, I think that was early, too early in his career for him to be judged on because a lot of people are like, oh, I'm yeah. Roma, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to kind of just swipe that across. I would love to see that start at Tottenham where we're. Uh, it's not the only way to play football, but I just kind of like my teams with possession and I like the way he's adventurous with his passing. And when he did the 3 4 3, He's shown that his flexible capabilities, that he can bypass the midfield, he can go into the front three, he can play direct football as well, if needed be. So he's not just like Tiki Taka, he's got a bit more strings to his bow. And but Alex, you know, think, think about players like, think about players' touches. Would that not just drive him nuts watching players' touches? Yeah, no, no, no. He needs, that's what I'm saying. That's why I wouldn't work at Tottenham. Yeah. That, he would need. Back a whole new squad. He'd love Benton Kerr. He'd love. Yeah, you know, would need to come in straight away, by the way. But yeah, he needs a lot more like players uh, that can actually pass and first touch and were more adventurous with their passing and can take risks and were technically good as well to be able to keep ball and hold ball and make things yeah. work. And also, the forward line needs to be. Uh, versatile so your wing forwards need to be able to come into out to out to in etc your your front three need to be able to rotate and even the wing backs need to be super aggressive and then you also need to be able to invert as well and become false wingers inside wingers as well blah 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 blah. but enrique just ah, oh, he's just basically a romance of mine that won't ever come true it's yeah. a fantasy that's the way i see it sean enrique would you would you want him at tottenham would he be a success no, I, I agree with that. Everything Ashmatic said. I, I think he, um, I think the, the pivot, the, the pivot in what we have to what we would need to make his style of football work is so dramatic that uh, I don't think we're a club that's capable of making that sort of uh, the, the decisions around getting rid of the deadwood. Bearing in mind how difficult the European market is, right? It's an often unspoken um, reality that you know if you make mistakes in your in your transfer market which Tottenham are, you know, uh, incredibly consistent in doing, then you need to have a secondary market to offload your mistakes into. And because the vast majority of the European leagues are bankrupt, absent, you know, maybe half a dozen football clubs that seem to be able to figure it out. And most of them are a little bit sort of suspicious in how they can figure it out, how they can continue to compete. Then if you don't have a secondary market that you can offload, even if Daniel Levy was to change the habit of a lifetime and say, all right, I'll write down Endobele to 5 million quid, or I'll write down this player, or I'll write down that player. Um, they, these players are still signed on long-term contracts that are on Premier League wages, and they're mm -hmm. never going to get that sort of money elsewhere in Europe. And so there's no obligation for those guys to give up you know, their pay packet. And I don't blame them because they've got a short life cycle in their own career so that make as much money as they can, etc. But with that being the reality as it is, absent a European Super League, not that I'm invoking the need for it, but I think that, you know, you can't, it's not easy for us to get rid of the dross to make room for the new players coming in mm -hmm. as the situation stands. And if you were to have a Luis Enrique, you would need, for me, an entirely new so you'd have yeah. to get rid of not only the eight, most of the eight players that are on loan, you'd have to get mm. rid of about another five or six players, seven, eight players from our current squad and then rebuild again. And at Tottenham, the, the managers aren't given enough time to do it. So whilst Enrique would be an intriguing manager in a different environment, a different circumstance with where we are, with where we are, what we have and the environment around us in which we can operate in, Enrique is the wrong guy for the job. You agree with that, Brains? 
Yeah, pretty much. I just think he comes. He's a player who comes from a certain era of technical ability, and he wants that in his players. And uh, I think, yeah, I think he would have a heart attack. I think we'd watch him disintegrate, you know, uh, on the sidelines. I think, uh, yeah, he would need too. We'd need too much work. He wouldn't be able to pick up where we are right now. Like bringing Enrique in right now and try to get top four. I don't think he would know what to do with the, the quality of player we've got. Um, mm. So yeah, so I would start stay away from um thomas frank obviously manager at brentford right now doing a fantastic job being there for a few years plays with a back three plays a very kind of intense um system get all the players work very hard and um um are all quite strong and quite it's quite an intense like pressing system everyone does a lot of running um overperformed um in each of his years uh, in at brentford currently in the top half of the table um creates a good culture around the club also can work within a budget uh so with you brains thomas frank would he be someone you consider I think that's someone going into a club that are eager to create a, a, a kind of a big winning, you know, mentality and stay, you know, and like, so they're like, their fans are, are happy because, you know, and there's this great vibe because they're like, they've got that kind of like us versus the world. We've come up. Now we're staying. If we can stay around 10, woo, like in this, everything's up and up. Bring him to Spurs. <laughs> Let's see how, how quick we destroy that man's spirit. You know, like you don't, you don't have the the network of everyone really fighting for something togetherness between everyone. Like you have, you know, a, everyone's tired. There's a malaise at the club. Fans are are outside with pitchforks, wanting to kill everyone inside the, the building. You know, like it's not something I don't think that he would be uh, used to football wise I think it could work but I think I don't know if we I think maybe we should be looking at an eagles man in a, in a potch and and players who can play attractive football but also be be looking to I don't know, just just be looking higher and looking to win we, we want to kind of like the, the interesting thing with Potts is that we you probably think there's a bit of fire in his belly come in and do better Nagelsmann probably come would want to come here and like no I'll, I'll be a young coach that wins the Prem like, you know, there's that fire in them whereas like Frank he'll, he'll, he'll come with kind of like well you know well look uh there's, you know he's not going to come and like let me let me go for it and fans at this club right or wrong we want to win titles and so I don't think he's the guy to do that uh, Ash, Thomas Frank, fan of his? Thomas Frank, I'm a fan of what he's done at his club. Um, I think Hoiberg would like him. Hoiberg would be like, yeah. Bro. <laughs> Danish connection. <laughs> um, I just think that in terms of the premiership, like my only criticism of him is that sometimes he has lost leads and sometimes he's not able to see out games. And that's yeah. been a massive problem at Spurs of late especially with the Southampton result um, that we just endured. So I, I would want a manager that's going to be able to have good in-game um, management. And I think that's something he needs to develop on, on his side. Um, but in terms of a likability, he's got that air about him. Um, whether the players, because we've got quite a few personalities in there now, whether they would respond to Thomas Frank in, in the way where we could push forward, that that's debatable. Like, would Kane be happy with Thomas Frank, or would his chest to be too high? Um, that's that's another question mark I have. Um, but yeah, definitely in styles of football, in terms of football, he is a very hard-working, front-footed manager. Um, very like direct as well. Um, like you said before, Reigns as well. A lot of running in the in, in the in the players. So a lot of players have to run for him, work for him. Um, that three-five-two hasn't worked for us this season, even though we did try to deploy it, and we haven't been as successful as the three-four-three. But um, at least we have the three at the back, and we can build up that. So Thomas Frank, for what he's done, if we could, if he could kind of produce that form into Spurs, then obviously that would propel Spurs mm. into the top mm. because of the job and the work he has done at. Um, at, at at Brentford but I just feel like it's a different energy like Brains was saying it's a different expectation from the fan base because the fans have got a lot to do with it I think if the fans were to lower their expectations and say look 6th, 7th you know is a, is a decent season but we had still attacking and attractive football we could we could live with that we Frank could work but we'd, we'd lose we'd lose Kane and then we'd be fighting relegation battles and then we'd need a Thomas Frank just to keep us up every season <laughs> yeah I think without, yeah it's true without a Kane I, I just feel like 
But I mean, like as as Sean always says, we we need to have we need to prepare for life without Kane. But my thing is, everyone saying sell him now. I would like to bring in one or two players to embed in to like maybe like you know we keep suck Kane on the bench one or two games and slowly embed these players slowly face mm. Kane now and so you're saying the club straight away and then all of a sudden we're not you know winning games because Kane's not there and we're not the same side a bit like when we tried to do the, the Magnificent Seven with um, Bell when we sold Bell and we tried to get all those players in yeah. and it work and then Tim Shaw would have to come in and and then even then it didn't. But you're saying get Thomas Frank in and then buy Rasmus Hoyland as his uh, as Kane's understudy. That sounds. Like <laughs> I've, I've heard worse plans. Um, but Sean, Sean, do you like do you like Thomas Frank? Yeah, I, I, I agree with what both the guys said. I think that he's he's good for where he's at, the level he's at. I think he's doing a really good job where he is. But I think that there's two consequences. Uh, with Thomas Frank that are absolute certainties. One is Harry Kane leaves and the other is that the fans will have absolutely no patience or tolerance mm-hmm. with that rebuild because he is not an exciting name yeah. that people can get behind a rebuild for. Uh, mm-hmm. So for me, um, no, it will be a, that's another one that's doomed to fail and it shouldn't happen. Definitely not. Uh, Ruben Almorim, Sean, you were talking about him before, saying that you, you like the look of him and he's quite similar to someone like Nagelsmann. The only difference is he would command a fee to, to get him. But in terms of the level of manager, do you put do you yeah. highly rate him? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I really liked him. I really like him. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, I didn't realise, I looked into him over, over the last couple of days or last week or whatever, I didn't realise how successful he's been everywhere he's been, not just at Sporting, but in Braga before. Um, you know, he got he he, he beat Benfica. Uh, was it Benfica? He beat in the in the cup final with with the Sporting Braga team. The guy's coming in. He's coming up. He's he's innovative. He's got the passion. He's got the the mind, the hearts and minds of the players that he's played with or managed rather. Um, I think he make again. I do think it's a relevant point that with the squad that you have. You know, does the person coming in do if they have a propensity to potentially have the three four three or the wing back system as their preferred style that have the ability to adapt when necessary, when the opportunity presents itself, rather than having a back four as the pro- the primary foot focus and then if necessary pivot to a back three. I think he is a good option. I don't think there's a lot of there's there's very many similarities between him and and Nagelsmann. The obvious difference being. I guess the caliber, the level of the club that he's managed, and I would, I wouldn't have a problem with it. The only problem that I foresee is the costs, and I, I know it's like you know an irrelevant thing in the long run, but in the short term, it, it's it's massively relevant. If Tottenham need to go out and spend, look, you get a hundred and fifty million quid transfer budget this summer, and you go and drop that on two massive, two big centre backs and a goalkeeper and a creative midfielder, then Tottenham's squad is. I think good enough to compete. I really do. I think we don't need much more than those four big players. However, that's going to cost to get those four big players. It's going to cost you 150 million quid. And Tottenham have made it clear unequivocally that that money has to come from within the clubs, you know, working within their means. And if you have to go and drop, uh, uh, allegedly, it's 30 million euros now, and that that cost goes down by 25 percent in the summer. So 22 and a half million euros just to deal to get Amarim in in the summer or 30 million now if you also have to deal with Conte's contract and that looks like an extra Mm. 20 million between him and his and his um, team then that's you know circa 50 million quid that is coming out of a transfer budget that is going to be impacted and influenced by how well we finish the season if you finish fourth then you're still taking out like that's still that's still a massive slice of the pie if you don't finish fourth and at the moment it's probably unlikely i think with all the turmoil that's going on if you finish fifth you're in the europa league then you, you can knock 50 million off the transfer budget if you finish sixth seventh or eighth then you can knock a lot more so for me whilst i'm very intrigued by Amarin, i've got absolutely no issues with his tactics I, I really i was so impressed with the way that he set up against arsenal it was phenomenal to see a sporting team absolutely like dominate away from home the team in arsenal that has been spoken about and touted as being if not the best then the second best football playing side in europe this season behind napoli or benfica depending on your your, you know what what you like but he absolutely tore them apart with a high press high 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 intensity 343 system i've got no problems with amarim as a manager i'd be very intrigued about him i just think the cost of getting it done 
and where we're going to finish in the league and how we find our money to pay for what we need for next season anyway. I think all of those things kind of eventuate in a situation where he's probably not the lo- the, the most obvious choice. But I'm mm. happy if Daniel Levy can find a way to make it happen and it doesn't in, doesn't disrupt our ability to go and find two decent centre-backs and a goalkeeper and a creative midfielder, I'm okay with it. Yeah, Ash uh, or Brains, did you know a lot, do you guys know a lot about Amorim? Um, for me... Um, everyone's talking about how well he is attacking, but um, he's impressed me defensively as well. Um, the back five that he can also um, implement as well in certain game situations um, can help Spurs stability-wise. He does a fi- back five at times with um, the two covering as well. They sit in the two sitting, and then the three up top. Sometimes what happens is he. The, the other two might sit in as well and help and they kind of create a box so centrally a bit like Conte you find it hard to break you down centrally and then when it comes wide as well he's got enough players to create overloads in certain areas where he presses and we make a numerical advantage and win the ball back up higher up the pitch as well so it's not even just like a low block sometimes it's a mid block or or we're pressing high and we're able to make numerical advantages where we turn over the ball we make those transitions and we win the ball high up and that's what Spurs have been missing certain times tactically um, as pressing as a, as a unit and um, if he can implement that into some of the boys then I think that would be also be advantage, mm-hmm. advantageous for, for Tottenham um, I'm very aware of what Sean's saying about the financial implications of bringing them in but I mean if it was just if we were limited to two players that we had to bring in I know everyone's been screaming for a creative mid, but I would be happy to just have a one one centre back, one top centre back um, to partner, uh, maybe like a you know your Romero, and then maybe get one of our younger centre backs, kind of develop them into a, into a top player because he's good at developing players, a bit like Nagelsmann. Yeah, very he's good. Develop, very develop, good. Developing players. Very good. So yep. If he can find um, one of our youth players, um, give them experience, you know, even if. We sometimes shit the bed, you know, excuse my language. But um, if we can somehow kind of push through that, um, then then I'd be happy just to have one centre back and then a goalkeeper because I feel like those were the two areas that really let us down. Those were where the mistakes were. That's what's cost us for our position in, in the league table. That's what's made it hard for us. That's what's ultimately made Conte lose his marbles and 100%. why he probably like said what he said in the press conference because of things like that. And it's it always come you always come back to that that whole sit that old saying that Fergie was always saying you, you can only win you can win the league with a back four and you win games with attacking attacking players so yeah. you, mm. you build from the back essentially even like when it comes to attacks it's just players being comfortable enough and brave enough at the back line to start that that, that those um attacking transitions so if we get a player that's quick enough mobile enough we can do that high press we can adopt more attacking Styles mm. of play and fans will be behind it, even if we don't win titles or cups straight away. Or as long as the attacking football's there, fans can get behind that. And I think the reason why fans turned so much was because there was there was a lack of attacking football at times. Mm. And games were very boring. And if you're not going to win stuff, and you're not going to be winning the games, because if you look at it, it was our best start as a team as Tottenham Hotspur in a long while. We had one of our best starts in the Premier League. Best area, start ever after ten games, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Also, the most boring <laughs> sport <laughs> ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's not ever, but no one watched it because everyone was asleep in the stands. <laughs> but this is it. But this is it. So imagine that. We've got some of our highest points tallies, and, and yeah, look at look at the talking points. Look how unhappy we are. So we, I always look back at, um, uh, what's his name, Wande Ramos. Wande Ramos brought us our trophy. But who cares? Because the football was so awful. Do you understand? Nobody ever talks about. Whereas Pochettino, he didn't win anything, but we can't stop talking about him. Do you know what I mean? Because of the style of football. Harry Redknapp. Our three, our three, Redknapp. Our three most memorable managers, Redknapp, Potter, Joel, and uh, and Pochettino, didn't win Joel. anything. I love Martin. But, um, yeah, you're right. I'm I'm brought, I'm brought, I'm, I'm, enjoy, enjoyment, right? Which is if anyone disagrees with me, if I'm talking out my ass, I'm I'm happy. I don't mind. This is just my opinion, like, um, but it, like uh, for me, that just appeases a lot of the fans, and you won't get so much toxicity 
and that's how the manager stays in for a job for longer. You can develop players for much longer time and that unity starts to form and that's what you need. You need unity, you need rhythm, you need a togetherness in the squad to push up the table. And we had that at Spurs, we had that under Potts, you had that under Redknapp and, and other managers. So if we can kind of replicate that, we can start to, and you said that we will, we will agree that we're not too many players off of it. So if, if this summer we were able to get two, two key areas fixed, then, then yeah, I think um, he could work. All right, uh, Brains, do you know much about Amorim? Would you, was he one who, who you would like through the door? Nah. All right, then. <laughs> nah, like, he, he's a good manager. He's, you know, like, I, lo- I love what he did with, uh, you know, um, with, with Sporting and Bragg. But, but yeah, I just, he, he, it's a different world. It is a different world coming from the, the, the Portuguese league to walking through those doors, you know, uh, and t- trying to take on Spurs is like uh, it's just a different world. It-, it would break him as well. And he's he's young, but I don't think that keeps uh, Kane. I don't think that really revitalizes the the, the the dressing room. I don't think he would get the type of players in that he probably wants as well. Um, so yeah, I just I, I can't I can't really see him working that much. I don't think it, the fans would be that much in, in terms, you know. All right. Uh, a couple of quick fire one quick fire managers now before we end the show um so just a couple of couple of words on, on, on these managers and and we'll end it um we'll start with sean uh vincent company uh listen don't know don't know enough about his uh what he's done in his managerial time i haven't really researched him but i did take a look at your uh the little that little uh, graph thing that you put out yesterday mm. mate and if he plays defensive pragmatic football then absolutely not i don't have no interest in it i want to see good football so no for me ash vincent company you like the look of him every child underneath uh pep has proven why they are the best at the moment uh you've got arteta top you've got um We've got obviously um, him company at top of the championship, um, playing some of the best football they've seen, and you've got the Celtic manager as well. Celtic manager doing um, mm. similar doing things bits. as well, yeah, doing bits top of the league as well. Um, so that is a reason for us to look to, to look to look at him under this particular board and and the fans that we have in the time, probably not. <laughs> Brains, Vincent, company. Yeah, I watched um, like the show that he did when he went to Anderlecht, um, and I, I don't know. I, I it was just I think people have seen some clips from that and been like, oh wow, like. But actually, if you watched all of it, it was just it was a lot of turmoil. I, I think he really struggled at times. Like it was, I don't really think he should have had a camera on him during that process he was he was very like crazy in the in the the, the dressing room and stuff and um but yeah i i didn't really see much it was very up and down with them and he's doing well with burnley but i, I don't think that i don't know I, i'd rather see him bring burnley into the the prem and then see how he does for a season with burnley so i would say no with them just now uh brain stick with you marco silva Nah, straight up no. Like I don't really see anything that of, of why you know. Like it, it's it's a different thing when you take on a club whose ambitions are are lower, and then you kind of do all right with them because like that you're not dealing with the same style of players who have that kind of all the players in a, a Fulham team or all the players in the teams that he's worked with. Like they they don't have that. Like we should be winning, and the and the fans, sixty thousand fans every week, looking down, going, "You should be winning titles." You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. No pressure. It's no it's, no pressure job, isn't it? Kind of yeah. Thing. So I, I I don't think he's got the 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 plums to handle Spurs right now. Sean Marco Silva, you like fan of his? I am a fan of his, mate. I, I, listen, I, I think he's super intelligent. When I listen to him do um, post or pre-match press conferences, or even just out on the pitch and stuff, like the guy speaks absolute like logic and intelligence. Like he's very interesting. I do think he will become a top manager, or he, at least he he could become a top manager. I do think he's got the stones potentially, but I agree with brains. Uh, at Fulham, it's a very low pressure environment, and for him to supersede expectations there is a different environment than walking into um you know a pressure cooker which tottenham is should be but also especially now will be even 
like even more than ever before. So a um, lot of like for the guy, a lot of admiration for him. I hope he does really well and I want to continue to track his progress, but I don't think he is the right guy for the job at this stage. Ash, Marco Silva? Yeah, not for me, but um, he, he started off well, but it was a fall off. I think it's the fall off that's kind of put me off, to be fair. Yeah. And I feel like since they've lost the Paulina, the destroyer in the midfield, I feel like they've just kind of, their results have kind of depictulated a little bit. Um, he's, they're really missing that, that, that presence in midfield, um, that ball winning midfielder. Mm. Um, I wouldn't mind him at Spurs, actually, Paulina. But yeah, yeah he'd be awesome at Spurs. I wouldn't mind him as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's a great. I think he's a great asset, and that's my fair, opinion. Fair enough. Any other managers that you reckon we could do well that, that haven't been mentioned? You reckon might actually be able to come into Spurs? Anyone or throw any managers out there who who we think, think we haven't I don't discussed? Think would do that. I don't Deserby. think Potter would do that bad. Deserby, Potter, Potter, Potter Deserby. Uh, what's called Brendan Rodgers? No, nah. is that yeah. a laugh about the room? No, I'm not going to laugh no, it out of the room. I actually, I, actually I, I don't know. Like, obviously, he's fallen from grace at Leicester, but I think that's a consequence of being there so long. I genuinely like we spoke. We're speaking about tactics going stale with Conte within 18 months. I think with Pochettino, I think a lot. Like you know, you see it with uh, with Klopp a little bit. I'm not blaming Klopp. Uh, for necessarily what's happening with Liverpool, but I think it's more to do with them not fixing the midfield issues. But ultimately, when you're, if, unless you're someone that's constantly innovating yourself, and then every day or every year or whatever you're bringing new systems with your team, and everyone's you know behind it, let's try something new, let's experiment. Essentially, like you're, you're if you're if you're going into as a manager, going into your team every day in any walk of life, if you're saying the same thing for a year, for six months, for a year, whatever, it can be interesting to hear it. Four or five years later, if you're still seeing the same thing, hearing the same mm -hmm. thing, then it grows a little bit tiresome. And I think that Brendan Rodgers is someone that has been at Leicester for maybe a little bit too long. It doesn't mean that he's a bad manager. I don't necessarily think he, he's nowhere near my first like top three for Tottenham. But I think wherever he goes next, he will do a very good job. All right. Well, guys, appreciate your time.